Last Starfighter was directed by Nick Castle and originally released in the summer of 1984. Featuring cutting-edge special effects for its time, this fish-out-of-water story packs plenty of sci-fi fun suitable for the whole family. Which is saying something coming from an era where family adventure movies could get a little wild. <laughs> With that said, we have a great one on hand, so strap into your Gunstar and let's take a look back at The Last Starfighter. The film introduces us to down-on-his-luck teen Alex Rogan, who has just one thing that makes his humdrum life bearable. No, not his beautiful and totally devoted girlfriend Maggie. I'm talking about the arcade-style video game Starfighter that has somehow appeared outside the local diner. After defeating the game and wowing everyone in the trailer park with his mad gaming skills, I mean really, you think he'd won the Super Bowl the way they were acting. He is approached by Centauri and learns that the game is actually a recruitment tool for the Star League, a group of interstellar warriors determined to defend the galaxy against Xur and the Kodan Armada. Reluctant at first, young Alex must learn to step up and accept his rightful place as a starfighter. Originally released in July of 1984, it opened to mixed reviews and ended up doing modest yet respectable box office numbers with $29 million in returns on a $15 million budget. Director Nick Castle had ties to John Carpenter having appeared as the original Michael Myers in the first Halloween movie as well as co-writing Escape from New York with Carpenter. Those two things right there are all I need to know. I'm in. The screenplay was written by Jonathan R. Batool, who got the idea when he wandered into a video game arcade one day. At the time, he was reading The Once and Future King by T.H. White. While watching kids play, he thought that it might be interesting to do a story where a video game served as a parallel to the mythical sword in the stone. Rather than using physical models for the space battle scenes, the various spaceships and other objects were 3D rendered, which was a new concept at the time. This was done to save on cost. Computer animation company Digital Productions created 27 minutes of effects for the film. After crunching the numbers, it was decided that using this technique would take half of the time and between a third and half of the cost of traditional special effects. This movie has a special place in my heart. I was eight years old in the summer of 1984, and I vividly remember seeing it on the big screen when it came out. It had everything an 80s kid could want. Video games, spaceships, aliens. Arcades were all the rage back then, and the concept of being able to walk up to a game and have it be your ticket to a life of high adventure in space was just a cool idea. The Gunstar is a highlight for me. I love it when spaceships and films have personality. The Enterprise, the Millennium Falcon, those are almost like characters in their own right that have become synonymous with their franchises. The Gunstar does that for The Last Starfighter. It's sleek, cool, and one of my all-time favorite sci-fi ships. As for my overall thoughts, I have to say that I love The Last Starfighter. Over the years, it has become a sort of comfort food movie for me. Something that I throw on every now and then when I need a good shot of nostalgia. Are the effects dated? Sure, but that's part of the charm. The use of early computer visuals at a time when no one else was really doing that give it an identity all its own. Beyond that, the characters are likable, the fish out of water theme works, and at a tight one hour and 40 minutes, it moves quickly. With that said, I do have to admit that nostalgia has a lot to do with my affinity for this one. Watching it recently, it occurred to me just how much it was geared toward kids at the time. In a lot of ways, this feels like it belongs to the children of the 80s. But if you're open to that, then this movie is definitely for you. Have you seen The Last Starfighter? Are you a fan? Do you have any recommendations for similar films? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Thanks as always for watching, and until the next time, have a good one.